Hello everyone, welcome back to Nature Engineering. Today we are doing an exercise on Applied Thermodynamics Power Machines N6. The exercise that we are doing is an exercise that I've taken from a question paper that was written on August 2019. It's question number four and it reads as follows. During a test on the boiler plant, the following data was recorded. They gave us the boiler pressure, temperature of the superheated steam, temperature of the chimney base, at the chimney base, pressure at the chimney base, heat carried away by the superheated moisture in the fuel gases, mass of superheated moisture in the fuel gases, heat carried away by the dry fuel gases, calorific value of the fuel, air fuel ratio, feed water temperature, specific heat capacity of water, heat absorbed by the economizer, equivalent evaporation from and at 100 degrees Celsius. And then the questions are they say. Calculate the following quantities by making use of the steam tables only. 4.1. The atmospheric temperature. 4.2. The specific heat capacity of the dry fuel gases. 4.3. The mass of steam produced per kg of fuel band. 4.4. The thermal efficiency of the plant. 4.5. The enthalpy of the feed water entering the evaporator. Thereafter, determine the feed water temperature from the steam table. 4.6. The heat unaccounted for in kilojoules per kg fuel. Also determine the heat unaccounted for as a percentage by drawing a heat balance chart. And this is the information that we are given. We are given the pressure of the plant and we're given the temperature of the superheated steam. We're given the temperature and the pressure at the chimney base, heat value, air fuel ratio, the feed water temperature, which is the temperature of the feed water before the economizer. The specific, we're given specific heat capacity of water and the equivalent evaporation. This is the formula for equivalent, equivalent evaporation. We remember this from Power Machines N5. They gave us the heat energy that went out with the moisture the mass of the moisture they gave us the heat energy that went out with the dry gases and the heat energy that was transferred at the economizer and then question number one they say calculate the atmospheric temperature looking at the information that we have we are going to use the formula let's say it's 4.1 we are going to use the formula to calculate the heat energy that went out with the moisture because we have the mass of moisture and we know in that formula we do have atmospheric temperature therefore we are going to say the heat energy that went out with moisture or the wet gases it's mass this will be h soup since they already told us that it is the superheated moisture in fuel gases. They said heat carried away by superheated moisture in the fuel gases. This tells us that the moisture is superheated. Therefore, we're going to say H sup minus H at the atmosphere. Or well, this will be a uh, specific heat capacity because we've already taken out the mass. Specific heat capacity times the temperature at the atmosphere let's erase this this will be like this and then this one we already have it's this which is one that's this one which will be one two three five point two five it's equals to the mass it's zero comma four kg in bracket this the h soup of the steam we are going to get using this information the temperature and the pressure at the chimney base we are going to use this information to get h soup from the steam table for superheated steam we are going to look for this temperature and this pressure where they where they meet we are going to extract the value of h soup as our heat energy for the moisture and i got that our H soup is equal to 2871 minus specific heat capacity is 4.2. And then this is what we are looking for. We solve for 
the atmospheric temperature and I got that it is 30 degrees Celsius. And then we go to 4.2. The specific heat capacity of the dry fuel gases. The formula to calculate for the dry, for the heat energy that went out with uh, the dry gases is equals to mg times specific heat capacity times the change in temperature. This we already know we are given is this one. It's 3311.175. It's equals to the mass. We know the total mass of the fuel gases. It's mass of the dry plus mass of the moisture. And this we get using what? The F fuel ratio which is 19 is to 1, that will be 19 plus 1, which will give us, oh, it's 18 plus 1, which will give us 19 kg. What we're going to do is, from this, we will be, we'll say 19 minus the mass of moisture, which will be 0 0.45. The specific heat capacity, that's what we are looking for. Specific heat capacity, the change in temperature, we already know it is equals to 200 minus 30. This is the temperature, temperature at the chimney base. And I got that our specific heat capacity is equals to... 1.05 kilojoules per kg kelvin and then we go to question number three question number three they say calculate the mass of steam produced per kg of fuel bend we are going to use the formula for equivalent evaporation since it is given by mass of steam enthalpy of the superheated steam minus the enthalpy of the feed water before the economizer divided by the mass of the coal or fuel that we are using times 2257 the equivalent evaporation were given as 10.123 it's equals to the mass of steam that's what we are looking for this we are going to use the information that we are given the pressure it's 3000 the temperature it's 250 we are going to use this two and extract our h soup from the superheated steam table which i got it as 2858 minus h1 h1 it's equals to HF at T1, temperature 1, which is the temperature of the feed water before the economizer. We are given the temperature, and from the steam table, I got that our H1 is equals to 138 minus 1, since we are using 1 kg of fuel, times 2257 this will give us our mass of steam as 8.4 kg per kg fuel this is to show that we are using 1 kg of fuel and then we go to 4.4 this is 4.3 4.4 they say the thermal efficiency thermal efficiency it's given by the heat energy that is transferred to the steam and the total heat energy that is produced from coal let's say from the coal 
times 100. The heat energy that is transferred to the steam, it's this one. The steam, this value, which will be the mass 8.4, 2,858, minus 138. The heat, total heat energy that is produced by the coal, it's the heat value. We are given the heat value as Two eight twenty eight thousand five hundred and sixty kilojoules times one hundred, and this will give us a heat a thermal efficiency of eighty percent. And then from here, we are going to four point five. The enthalpy of the feed water entering the evaporator. Thereafter, determine the feed water temperature from the steam table. Here, they are looking for H2. H2, we know it's equals to H1 plus the heat energy that was absorbed at the economizer. H1 we have already calculated, we already extracted from the steam table and we got that it is 138. But remember, the values that we get from the steam tables, this, uh, specific, this is a specific enthalpy, meaning it is kilojoules per kg of steam. We want the total enthalpy, which then we have to times by the mass of the steam, which is 8.4. The heat energy that was transferred at the economizer were already given. It's equals to 2,352. And then we get our H2 as 3,500 and 11.2 kilojoules per kg of fuel. They went ahead to say, thereafter, determine the feed water temperature from the steam table. Now, remember our, our components are like this. We have the economizer, we have the evaporator. This is H1. We get that H1 by using T1. This is H2. We get that H2 by using T2. We say H2. It's equals to HF at temperature number 2. What we do is, if we are given this, we look for this at the steam table. And in that corresponding row, we are going to extract the value of hf but now we have hf we want to get the value of t2 this is our hf but remember the values that we get from the steam table they are specific enthalpies which will be kilojoules per kg of steam this one it's kilojoules this is just to show that we are using 1 kg of fuel. So before we can use this to extract the value of T2 from the steam table, we have to divide by 8.4. And this will give us a value which is 418. This will be kilojoules per kg of steam. And then using this, we are going to look for this in the HF column. And finding this, we are going to look in that corresponding row to get the value of T2, which I got it as mm, T2. It's equals to 99.6 degrees Celsius. And then we go to question number 4.6. They say the heat unaccounted for. In kilojoules per kg fuel also determine the heat unaccounted for as a percentage by drawing the heat balance sheet <sighs> excuse me 
we know heat balance sheet we do this this is heat value or calorific value in this question we are given the calorific value we convert it to it into kilo which will be 28560 kilojoules yeah it's kilojoules and then here is the distribution heat energy to steam heat energy to steam uh, this value right here this value and i calculated and got that the value is equals to 2000 it's 22,848 kilojoules. And then to dry gases, the heat energy that went out with the dry gases, this one were already given in the information. This is it. It's 3,311.175. And then with the wet, it is also given this is the value Ooh, so one two three five point twenty five unaccounted for we know we're going to add this and then minus from this since our total here must be twenty eight thousand five hundred and sixty we're going to add this three and minus from this that value that we are going to get here, we are saying it's unaccounted for. And I got that that value is 1165.575. And then that's the total. We have percent. This is heat in kilojoules have the percent our percent we know it will be this divided by this times 100 and i got that here it's 80 percent as we got from the thermal efficiency and then here i got that it is 11.6 here it is 5.3 is percent it's also percent then here i got 4.1 and this should give us 100 percent 100 percent and that is all it's all uh that they've asked from us and that's how we go about answering this question i will see you on the next lesson